Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. It's one year later and I'm back in Spain. You guys ready to build something awesome? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hundred percent. One of the hardest things is the language barrier. I know a little bit of Spanish, but it's more like Donde el Baño and Taco Bell. <laughs> Getting through it. Our operators are here, starting to dig. We've got the pond marked out. We've got another crew working on laying out the deck and getting all their material and stuff in there. So things are definitely happening. You can remember this was the front door and we designed everything like we normally do from inside the house. Remember all of this was all concrete before and none of this was finished, but it was those big windows over there that we were focused on. So if you look at those windows, that's gonna lead right out to just past that area will be the big waterfall. Really cool sunken family room, giant kitchen table. See here, we've got all kinds of lines in here, but this is about where the deck's gonna come out to. So right now they're taking measurements, figuring out what kind of lumber they're gonna need, but this is the excavated area, so we're gonna have a wall that sits here supports the deck that cantilevers out to there. We got Victor over here working on this side of the pond. So the pond's gonna come up nice and close in here, kind of swing back around that way, around over there. It comes right up to the foundation of this patio here. Then you can see how it's gonna curve around this little planter, which is where this tree is at. Huge waterfall from the distance, stepping stones going across our wetland area, and big, big pond. Intake bay is gonna be way over there past that machine. Ralph, great job, buddy. Thanks. <laughs> I'm out here with my good friend, Jack Harju from Atlantis Water Gardens. Jack, we are back in Valencia, Spain. We were here, what, a year ago? It feels like just yesterday, we were up in the mountains tagging boulders for this epic project we're about to get started How awesome on. was that? I'm so excited for those to show up and actually start building a pond with them. Those were probably some of the most spectacular boulders I've ever seen. Well, and just such a rare opportunity to be up there and actually say, I want that rock and I want that rock. From and where it was born. Yeah, from where it was born. So we've got about, what, 14 days? We're gonna be gone two days before Christmas. We are meeting up with Ralph from Pondscapes AZ. Mm -hmm. Chris Hansen's coming out here. I guess we have a couple Couple helpers, operators. I feel like as long as we have the four of us, doesn't matter, right? We overcome some huge obstacles in the past. Pretty sure we can overcome anything out here. I am genuinely excited. Speaking of obstacles, my excitement kind of changed after we hit our first one pretty early. You can hear how deafening that thing is. What do we do? The soil that we're getting into over here is literally solid rock. This is just being picked at and picked at and picked at, and we gotta get down at least four feet deep off of here. And this bedrock goes from here all the way back into our, where our wetland's at, which is way back there, all the way to over in here. This part looks fantastic. It looks exactly like what we're supposed to do. The problem is, is all the soil that came out of here is just straight up garbage. It's just all kinds of miscellaneous rubble and pots and plastic. It's just ridiculous. We do have some decent soil which we can move around and uh, use for our berm. But the other challenge we have is you cannot run equipment on the weekend, kind of an ordinance here in the neighborhood. So we can run this for a couple more hours today. Right now we are gonna be about four days behind schedule just because of the excavation challenges that we're having right now. But it is what it is and we're gonna try to make the best of it. Morning. It's Saturday morning. We're coming back out here to try to get a little bit more done. We're gonna try not to run the jackhammers where we're chipping away all this rock until a little bit later, like around 9 30, 10 o'clock in the morning, and see if we can keep going. So far, so good. Good news is we're making a little bit of progress. None of the neighbors have come by and complained yet. The township hasn't come by and complained, but it's only been going for about a 20 minutes here. They would probably not enjoy that on a Saturday and definitely not tomorrow. But we're hoping today we can get a couple hours of jackhammering away and keep that excavation moving forward. We're gonna have to really put in some late hours, I think coming up here pretty soon, but it's all part of the charm of travel projects. Charm, is that the word we're looking for? That's what we're gonna go with, charm, bye.
So we were hoping for a machine to help dig all this, but because it's not here and we have no idea when it's coming, we're all digging this little beach area out by hand. It's kind of challenging because of the rock. It's kind of challenging because of the soil. It's more challenging because of the tools. The one of the things that you never ever think about when doing a project outside the country is they don't have the same tools that you do. So you can see Josh is in a little hole over there. Chris has got what kind of looks like a spade. Ralph's got what kind of looks like a spade, but they're flimsy. They're not thick steel. They bend real easy. Short little handles. It's just uh, very challenging, but the work must go on. So we're going, going, going. So the idea aesthetically, of course, with this is we want a sand beach kind of over in this area for the kids to kind of come out from inside the house, walk out this way to their little two foot deep kind of play area, waterfalls there, sand beach that comes all the way from back behind these palm trees, which will just look amazing and then just gently cascade down below the water level. So we're setting that sand to come in probably about 10 inches below water down over here and then it'll ramp up to dry sand back over in here where the kids can play and make a mess. You know how it goes. Should be a really, really cool spot. While we're doing that, we are still on day whatever it is now, four or five, chipping away at this solid rock out here. All right, here we go. So good news, well, I don't know if it's good news, some of the rock finally showed up. So all the rock was actually supposed to be here before we got here. Our first load just showed up. It's something like three o'clock on Monday. We were hoping to have rock starting to go in sometime Saturday. We are still digging. How's it feel to be setting boulders? I feel great. We went and handpicked these up in the <laughs> mountain. Now they're actually here in Valencia for us to use them. I remember that one. I think I picked that one. Yeah, you 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I recognize it. <laughs> Just right here in the beach. Going to frame out where the beach is. This is all going to be sand. I'm going to need your input here, Brian. All right, let me put this down. We'll show you guys its final resting place in a second. It's Tuesday out here in Spain. Still here because we have a lot of work to do, but we are moving along. We got the fabric in, but actually I'm going to show you something we're doing a little bit different this go around with the pond. Hey Jack, explain to everybody why we're doing the fabric and sand. The past four days, they've spent hammering all this rock out here. So when they're done, it's not going to be a very even surface. It's going to be kind of bumpy. We're putting down this fabric as a protective layer to keep any loose rocks from migrating up into the sand. Then we've got a sand layer. Then we're going to do more fabric on top. We want to make sure that there's no chance of anything from below coming up into our liner. We're gonna put about that much sand on this. What we have to be careful with is a couple things. There's two seams that have to be done here. One coming from the deep stream, one going into our intake. 50 foot wide liner by 100. We're gonna take that, go down onto our wetland, create our waterfall and everything on the backside. But areas like this can suck a lot of liner in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise this up a little bit. We'll figure out our elevation for the wall so we can get a little bit less deep here. And then we've gotta make sure we keep the liner close enough to our existing stream liner to do this seam and then that one. Once that's done, they can go ahead and start building this wall. It would be a huge milestone for us because that means we can start setting boulders inside here and getting this thing rocking. Thanks for the explanation, Jack. I think now is as good time as any to update you guys on what's happening this week for Team Aquascape. I'm in Puerto Rico. Yes, me and a small team of Team Aquascape and a bigger group of certified Aquascape contractors. We're here for our winter retreat, which we're calling Ponce Simonium. It's an awesome networking event with a few classes for our contractors. And today we built a fountainscape for an orphanage. But while this is happening, I'll have Chris give you a few updates on what's happening back at Aqualand. So a huge update 
update here inside our fish retail area at Aqualand. The guys have now finished the intake skimmer area. They've got the pumps installed. All the plumbing has now been daylighted. They also made some really cool racking to be a spot for aquatic plants. Now that this is done, the energy is being focused on taping down all of those funky folds, you know, straight walls up and down with the liner, as well as putting in the circulation jet system. What they're doing is running a two inch trunk line all the way around the perimeter of the pond, occasionally running tees where we're gonna have that three quarter inch lock line shooting straight up. The nice thing about that trunk line is it's nice and smooth. And also what they're doing to help disguise it is putting cover tape down and really taping that thing down on the liner, pushing everything up to the top. And then it gets drawn in to that skimmer intake area. We have a couple things left to do once that's completed. Finish installing the deck. The second thing, and it's gonna be a huge one, is installing that koi window. Now that will occupy some of our time because we wanna make sure that that thing is absolutely bomb proof and watertight. So last thing, and we're still waiting on it, those big biological filters that will actually filter this entire system. Along with that, we're also here inside the sandbox studio preparing for next week's Aquascape Academy. And if that wasn't enough, Mother Nature also decided to throw us a little curveball this week and give us our first measurable snowfall of the year. So the guys are out actually helping clean that up as well. We had a number of other things to do, but right now we're gonna keep that as a surprise. So you guys keep enjoying Spain and we'll continue to pop back in, giving you guys regular updates of our week. Until then, get back to Spain. Wait, no, there's one more update I want to leave you with. Speaking of a sandy beach, remember that 1,600 pounds of silica sand we got last week? Well, before I left, I had an idea where we could put it all. I asked Ed Ballou, the pond professor. Cool. I found him. Oh. Ed, just a question. Yes. Is there any negative reason to using silica sand in a pond? Negative reason? The only negative could be if you have a lack of flow or not a lot of big fish to keep it aerated because you could get anaerobic buildup inside of it. And if it's really, really thick. Other than that, though, no. So without admitting that I messed up, I intentionally bought 1,600 pounds of the wrong silica sand. Oh. There's like different grades. Yeah. Right? I didn't know. <laughs> I'm not a sand guy, Jeff. You know what I'm talking about? I know a great sand guy would get at a price. So I got this silica sand stuff that came as like a 420, and it's like sugar sand. Do you think I could get away with putting that in the bottom of the fish retailing? They're constantly, and they're constantly moving it. I think it will be great. Yes! We are putting the sand at the bottom of our Koi retail tank. It's gonna look incredible. I can't wait to see it and I can't wait to show you guys. That's it for my update. Stay tuned throughout the rest of Spain to see what Team Aquascape is up to each week. Now, time to go back. Alright, liners in, fabric over the top. We're getting gravel in for our block wall that's gonna support the deck. <laughs> Well, struggle after struggle out here in Spain. We did hit a huge milestone though today. We got the liner in, got our wetland being dug back over here, but now it's just raining and it's coming down hard. I am feeling miserable. I got the worst cold, just not good. <laughs> but we're moving through it. We're so far behind and now just nervous because we have all kinds of obstacles, which I think we'll talk about tomorrow. We're gonna get out of this rain and uh, head back. We've only got about another hour of sunlight anyways. Maybe try to regroup a little bit come in here, hit it hard tomorrow, and remember that we love our jobs. Bye. Hey, Mr. Ralph. Say hi. Hey. There you go. What are our goals today? We've yeah. got big goals today. We've got to get that wetland finished. We've got to get it squared up. More jackhammering to get that trough done for the centipedes. Waterfall over in the smaller areas, pretty much done. And we've got to get these guys lined out on building this masonry wall. That is super important so we can do some big frame rocks working off of that. And that intake. Intake is going to need to get a piece of liner seamed onto that. Lots of a lot's going on for one day. Lots going on. You think that's too much for us to handle? <laughs> so the waterfall is pretty much done. Wow, I say pretty much done, but not really. We've got spill stone, spill stone, and this is actually underwater. But we've got to bring the biofalls in. We've got to bring in all the soil up to the side, get that berm all situated, get some extra support rocks back out and through here, back out and through there. We still have to get our sand for our beach. I don't know if we'll get over to Intake Bay today or not. I have no idea. We 
don't do it this way. Normally we take the biofalls, we set it first and then build all of our rock up to it. Here we just couldn't do it because if we had set the biofalls where Jack's at, it would have killed a lot of our access for setting the boulders back in over here and here. So now we've basically set our last spill stone. Now we're bringing the biofalls up back to it and then we'll trench our pipe going back that way. Sometimes it's the more efficient way to do it that way. Usually it's not. Here we just would have killed that access. So we're getting this area buttoned up. 100% this space is gonna be finished today. Can't wait to see something just done out here. everybody it is Thursday it's officially one week past our start date that's right we've been here seven days things are coming along what really really helps with keeping us motivated every single day is our audience it's who we're doing it for so every morning sweet Harper over here Harpy comes out wishes us luck look at that big old smile mom dad usually come in a little bit later come sit over here and remember that view is this over in here so there's that waterfall 95% finished we just got to button some stuff up over there oh Hopefully it pulls them from inside to outside and they get to look at this unbelievable park-like setting we're creating for them. We're still dealing with challenge after challenge after challenge. We're waiting on rock. The rock that's supposed to be considerably larger than the rock we have now. The challenge we're gonna have with that, if it shows up when they say it's gonna show up, is that it's gonna look a lot different than this stuff. So this is the weathered limestone, kind of top cap limestone. The stuff that's coming I think is a little bit more chunky, a little bit more orange color. We'll blend with this nice, but what we were preferring is that that stone would be here so we could mix it in with this stuff so we didn't have one style here and then another style over there. They've promised us that two loads will come today. One load was supposed to be here at 8 a.m. It's 8 a.m. It's not here. We knew that probably wouldn't happen. 8 a.m. for them means closer to one, which is fine, just as long as it gets here today. So we're gonna try to stay busy and we have plenty to do. We have a seam that we have to do over here. Last night, we hit a huge milestone by getting this area prepped for our wetlands. We have two centipedes, a snorkel, 66 aqua blocks, Jack? 66 aqua blocks, yes. So our hole got a little smaller than we anticipated, but it'll be plenty big for this size pond. We have so much circulation, so much filtration for this. This thing will still be spotless. We have a huge intake. We've got a bile falls over there. We've got tons of circulation. We've done the calculations. We're still plenty fine on a filter this size. For us to go any larger, it would have added just days. We had to make a, a decision. It's still gonna function the way it's supposed to and everything will be fine. So it's nice having this team out here. And when we have talent like this, we can split up, get two things done at once. So Jack and I are working on that seam. Chris and Ralph are over here working on the wetland. Chris, what are you working on right now? Just kind of leveling up the bottom of the trench for the centipede and snorkel. We over excavated it, brought some sand in. Now we're just fine tuning it so these aqua blocks will sit nice and level across the bottom of the entire excavation. So we just had to bring that centipede up just about an inch. So nearly impossible for us to do the excavation and get things exactly right because again, Again, the solid bedrock that everybody had to dig well. Not everybody had to dig through. Those guys had to dig through. Thank God. Yeah, right? This is just a quick little trick to make sure the top of the centipedes are level with our shelf over here, making sure that those aqua blocks move smoothly across the top. All right, so we've got our morning audience. There's Ashley Harper. Good morning. Good morning. What are you guys doing? Watching our pod being built. <laughs> Is it chaotic yet or still entertaining? You like it? <laughs> Thanks for everything. You guys are the best hosts ever. Oh, uh, you guys are the best. We're so excited. <laughs> are you excited? Are you gonna go swimming? <laughs> nice. And that's a hundred percent why we keep doing this. So much fun. Customers are absolutely amazing. To have a young family with three kids, you know they're gonna love this backyard. It feels good to have like the whole machine working now. We've got multiple excavators moving. A truck is here on offloading stone that we desperately need. These guys are finishing up the wall. The wetlands going in. Like this is the pace that we're supposed to be going. I'm happy with how it's turning out today. <laughs> awesome. nothing's gone right on this job but that would be super negative slightly pessimistic it is eight o'clock at night and a load of stone just showed up so we are super super excited Jack's already on the forklift racing out there getting the stone we've been waiting for the stone for days that's why we stayed late as we did to get this what we were 
you're looking for. But, you know, I love my job. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's just, we're looking for big stone. And he keeps telling us we're gonna get this big, big stone. And these are all like hand size, 12 to 18s. And it's just one more obstacle. But we got this because we've been here before. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. Seth, what was the inspiration to even do a pond? Man, it goes back. My wife has been joking since the day that she met me when she asked me, like, she's like, what do you do for fun? You watch movies? I said, I watch a lot of YouTube videos of ponds and <laughs> And she was interested in you. <laughs> I barely, I hooked her, you yeah. know? I grew up in Miami on canals, bass fishing, like looking for crawfish always. At some point, I became aware of the fact that people were doing these amazing transformations in their backyard. I was watching the aquascape, watching your videos. When people started saying that they had their vacation in their backyard, that resonated with me because I was like, man, I don't want to have a vacation one week a year. Yeah. I want every afternoon to be able to unwind, watch the kids grow up there. Correct me if I'm wrong, is kind of the whole catalyst to you even moving to Spain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is like the, the pond kind of fit in the whole plan of the lifestyle change of slowing things down. You told us a few times that you researched this a lot. It wasn't like you went on YouTube and yes, Atlantis is the one, Aquascape. You researched like where are there pond builders in Spain? You found somebody in Germany. Mm -hmm. No, I went, went so far as to get some preliminary quotes from some people in Spain, reached out to some people and it just was one of those things I was like, go bigger or go home. It was clear that people were not operating on your guys' level. Not to blow smoke up here, you know. <laughs> Like, okay, it feels good. But it was just, you know, was, I would see some samples of work and it was really dig a hole, take some rock, dot around the perimeter, boom, there's your pond. Yeah. And like the way that you guys hit these depths and different kind of layers of the thing and different interaction points, like none of that was happening and I knew that I was not in a position to try and explain to somebody how to do it. Sure. Like, and so I, I said to my wife, I was like, we either do this with them and it's a home run or we just forget the project. We can't go, we can't take a half measure here. I can remember when you and I first talked and you're like, yeah, I'd like to do a rec pond. And, uh, I'm in Spain. I'm like, like Spain, like another country Spain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> once I got past the initial shock, I called him. I'm like, hey, you want to go to Spain to do a console? I'm like, I think this guy's pretty serious. We did, and it kind of went really smooth, I think. We came out here, we met with you, you kind of shared, this is the general vicinity and where I want it, but you didn't give us really any parameters. You weren't like, I'm thinking this big, where I wanted waterfalls. You were like, this space and you do this space. That was it. No, I've seen videos of your, you when the homeowners kind of just turn it over to you guys and say, here's the space go crazy and I was like that's what I want like I don't want to be telling you how to do your art how to do your job like this is the space you guys know how we want to enjoy it like let's go for it you said one of the funniest things to me that I've ever heard before so we almost never do drawings mm -hmm. ever 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 we actually take pride in the fact that we can go out with a can of marking paint mm -hmm. and mark it all out it'll help you visualize it so much better than any type of drawing do you remember what you said to me so you actually like the drawing more than the paint and you're like I don't know what the hell the paint well, was you uh, know what it really was also I I feel your enthusiasm. I see you marking the paint. And then I go and try and tell my wife. <laughs> yeah, there's a thing over here where that orange is. Something yeah. will be. And she's like, what? I, I think we need to visualize this a little bit better. Yeah. In this um, circumstance, the drawing actually helped quite a bit. Dude, I mean, I'll always remember you guys being at the dining table at our old house. You laying out the drawing. My wife and all of us and everybody getting it all at the same time. It's hard to, in our mind, you already see the result's going to be. And I think having the drawing was a, a great reference to help oh, everybody. Yeah. yeah, get a handle on the scale of the thing. In the months since you guys have left, I've been able to like reference that drawing, put myself in different places in the pond. And, oh, okay. Like, this oh, is cool. Today, That's you know? good. Yeah. Well, no pressure. Now we just gotta beat the drawing. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I guess we have nothing left to do but to get to work. Yeah. Let's go do it.